Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be concluding this section, dealing with lessons 7, 8, and we're going to be looking at how we can start to put some of this together to be able to solve um, a function like we have here, where we have x to the 6 equals 1, and we're going to solve that equation by factoring. We're going to find all the solutions. We're going to find all the real solutions and the non-real solutions. And again, all the tools that we've been using as far as factoring is concerned are going to come into play here. So it's very important uh, to make sure that you refresh your memory if you want to go back and look at some of those previous videos to review how to factor when we're dealing with a difference of two cubes or a sum of two cubes or if we're dealing with a difference of two squares uh, because, all, like I said, all of those are going to come into play. For example, with this one here, with x to the 6 equals 1, you might say, well, how can I factor that? That's just x to the 6 equals 1. Can I just take the 6th one of both sides? Well, we're trying to find the, all the solutions to this, not just the real solutions. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to set this up as an equation. We're going to set it up equal to 0, kind of like what we have to do when we go to use the quadratic formula. So if I do that, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get x to the 6th minus 1 equals 0. Now that x to the 6th minus 1, this is actually a difference of two squares. So let's take a minute now to look to see how we can factor this down as a difference of two squares and then make sure that we get it factored down completely so we can solve this equation to find all of the solutions to this equation, both the real solutions and the non-real solutions. So again, anytime we're dealing with a difference of two even power um, terms, again, we want to make sure that we look at it as terms of a difference of two squares. So what I want to do is I want to figure out, well, what's the square root of x to the 6? Well, again, if it's a square root, to figure out uh, what that would be, that we would just take the power and divide it by the root. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we'd end up with x cubed. So this is the same as, as far as a difference of two squares, because remember, for a difference of two squares, it's this, is that if we have x squared minus y squared, that that factors down to be x plus y times x minus y. So this ends up being the same as x cubed being squared minus 1 being squared. So our x would be the same as x cubed as far as this equation when we factor it out is concerned. And my y is the same as 1. So this is going to factor down to be x cubed plus 1 times x cubed minus 1. And now you might recall that uh, we have a sum and difference of cubes. And that's what we have here. Remember, for a sum of dif and a difference of two cubes, we have where we start out with the x. And it's always, let's start out with this first one here, the x cubed plus 1. Remember, we have that acronym SOAP, where it always starts with the same sign. So it will be plus here, plus 1. And then in parentheses, we would have x squared followed by the opposite sign, which would be minus, followed by your x and y, so that would be 1 times x, which is just x, followed by the always positive, so it would be plus, and then your y value, or your 1 here, squared, which is just 1. Then the x cubed minus 1, that can also be factored. Again, it's going to be your x value is just x, then it's going to be the same sign, so it's going to be a minus, our y value, which is 1, times x squared, times the opposite sign, which is a plus, times, again, x times our 1, which would just be x, plus our 1 squared, which is 1. And again, all of that is equal to 0. That's what we had at the beginning. I should have had that here. So now we're going to set each of these factors equal to 0 to figure out... Um, all of our real solutions and non-real solutions. Well, when I take and set this first factor equal to 0, x plus 1, when I set that equal to 0, I get a solution of negative 1. When I, select, when I set this factor equal to 0, I get a solution of a positive 1. So now I'm going to set each of these trinomials equal to 0. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to use a quadratic formula for this first uh, part here. So I'm going to take the opposite of b. b in this case is a negative 1, so the opposite of that is a positive 1. So it's going to be plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1. All divided by 2a, whoops, which would just be 2. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify that. Well, 4 under the radical, 4 times 1 is 4, times 1 is still 4. So we'd have 1 minus 4, which would end up being a negative 3. Remember, we don't want to leave this as a negative 3, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an i and make that a positive 3. And 3 can't be simplified at all. So I'm going to write this as, I'll write it down below here, as 1 half. I'm going to break that fraction up into two parts. It'll be 1 half plus or minus, uh, plus or minus i squared of 3 divided by 2. So that's another one of our zeros. We get that, again, from the x squared minus x plus 1. So again, that's going to be 1 half plus or minus i squared of 3 divided by 2. Well, now we're going to have another one dealing with the x, another zero dealing with the x squared, another solution dealing with the x squared plus x plus 1. So again, we have to use a quadratic formula. So the Opposite of b, in this case, is going to be a negative 1, plus or minus b squared, which is going to be 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1, all over 2. And you might recognize that this is very similar to what we had in the previous problem. Everything is the same, except for this one here is a negative 1. So I'm just going to save myself some time. If you want to go through this whole process again, you can. But I'm going to save myself some time and recognize that the only thing that's going to be different is this here is going to be a negative 1. So I'm going to end up with a negative 1 half plus or minus i squared of 3 over 2 as another solution. So those would be my solutions here. Um, that would give me... Uh, so these would be all my solutions, both my real and non-real solutions to this equation. So there's a lot of steps there, pretty much using a lot of what we've talked about so far in this chapter. Let's look at one more that maybe isn't going to be as complicated. Let's look at this one here. We have x to the fourth equals 289. Again, we're going to set this up the same way. I'm going to subtract 289 from both sides to get this equal to 0. And this is a difference of squares, because I could take the square root of both of those, and I end up getting x squared. The square root of 289 is 17, so I'd have x squared plus 17 times x squared minus 17. Now, I really can't factor this. Well, for one, I can't, don't have, there's no such thing as a sum of two squares, and I can't get the square root of 17. So the easiest without, I mean, I could take the square root of 17 and deal with the root here and, and uh, do it that way. But since we're just trying to figure out what the solutions would be here, I'm going to set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve it that way. So watch what happens. If I have x squared plus 17 and set that equal to 0, well, I would subtract 17 from both sides, which would give me negative 17. And then I'm going to have to take, to get rid of the square, we would take the square root of both sides. But remember, when we do that, we're going to have two solutions, a plus or a minus. And I can't take the square root of negative 17. I can't leave the negative under the root. So we factor out an i, and that makes that 17 positive. So that would be two of your solutions, plus or minus i, square root of 17. And let's do this again for the other factor, x squared minus 17. Set that equal to 0. So again, I would start by adding 17 to both sides. And now I would just take the square root of both sides. Again, that means I'm going to have two solutions. x equals plus or minus square root of 17. And there's no i here in this case because it's a square root of a positive 17. So my solutions here for x would be that it would be plus or minus i square root of 17 and plus or minus square root of 17. So it would be a total of four solutions there, because we'd have one being a positive i, square root of 17, another negative i, square root of 17, and then we have the plus or minus square root of 17 without the i. So that's it. That's how we would solve some of these equations when we're, by using factoring, by using a lot of the stuff that we've talked about so far in this unit on factoring. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.